All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am here today with Justin, all the way from Berkeley, California, who is going to be with me for the next 25 to 30 minutes. And we're going to be discussing Palantir, but not too much about the stock, the numbers or the valuation, actually the technology and using the product. It's been a long time since I actually talked to someone inside of the matrix, you could call it in terms of Foundry and AIP. And so I'm happy to have him on the channel today and discuss a little bit more further. Jothan, thank you for being here. Wonderful, Amit. Thank you so much. Excited to be here too. So let's get started with, uh, you're a sophomore in, in Berkeley, California, majoring in comp sci, computer engineering. Um, how did you get started with actually engaging with Palantir software? Yeah, sure. So um, just, uh, I'm a ex business student, UC Berkeley. Um, I'm mainly computer science oriented. So I initially got into Palantir. I was, I've been knowing a Palantir uh, foundry and stuff like that, but I never really knew you could um, build on the foundry for free as a developer. And I actually got to know of that when Sham uh, tweeted on um, X, I was like, oh, wow, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's give it a try. So um, I actually got into the Foundry, uh, learned a bit of stuff here and there, and um, I just started playing around with uh, stuff to see what it was like. And um, I just like building projects here and there, uh, React, Python. Uh, never really used Foundry, though, so it was pretty new. Uh, learning curve was a bit high to start off with, but um, I was able to uh, learn along the way. It's pretty nice. And then um, quick shout out to Michael, Michael Lau. He was helping me along the way. So, Michael, uh, awesome. I yeah. love him. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I was just building, I found a data set on Kaggle. Uh, I'm always searching for data sets, just building stuff here and there. So I found this data set of crimes in LA. That was my first project. So I was like, what if we could figure out some sort of correlation between the crimes that happen in LA and the distance to the closest police station? Huh. So yeah. I was like, let's put this into uh, the foundry. Let's see what we can do. So I cooked, the, cooked up a quick project, put it in and, uh, well, like I just got a output. I was like, wow, it's pretty cool. So since then I've just been building on the, the foundry. So, okay. So the core thesis you had initially for your first project was, uh, let's take a data set of crimes in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are a lot of crimes in LA and you're in California. So you're kind of close to the situation itself. And right. the app's idea was when a crime happens, if you could contact the nearest police station, that also requires a ton of data to be integrated. And all of that theoretically could be built through Foundry. Right, exactly. Yeah. So my goal was to determine if as you went outward from the closest police station, if the crimes got more severe or not. Like, for example, was an assault happening further away or closer to a police station? Like, what was the 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 range of that? So that's what I was examining with the, the Foundry. Okay. So now why? I, I think this is something I think a lot of people are curious about. Mm -hmm. Given you're a data science uh person why was foundry a differentiating product in terms of developing something like this right yeah i mean um i've i've been working with power bi i've been working with a lot of tools that uh can analyze data for you but i've never really been able to hop on a platform uh that does it all end to end a complete full suite of everything that you have and i feel like that's a that's something that um, a lot of people don't really realize about the foundry that it's not just something that can analyze your data. It's like a full suite, a complete like infrastructure. And I actually saw this uh, tweet on X yesterday. Someone was calling it infrastructure. So I was like, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Like, it's not just one thing. It's not, it's not just something to analyze your data and like output it. Like you can take it in, you can build models on it. You can uh, basically the complete ontology. So it's like completely free for you to do. So let's actually dive deep on that because I think that's an important thing. I've also mm -hmm. referred to Foundry's infrastructure from a kind of high level overview that people can build on top of it, therefore it becomes a platform. Sham even said in 2022 at a JP Morgan tech conference that he mm -hmm. wants Foundry to be what AWS was uh, in 2010. Right. The next decade, he wants Foundry to be like AWS. What does it mean as a data science software engineer to actually have a infrastructure platform versus a feature platform? Right. Yeah. I mean, the problem with current features is um, you have to go from one platform to another. I think you have to jump from uh, one platform to another and you just have to keep going back and forth. And um, it's not just everything on one that I can work with. For example, I'm able to load in my data. I can build models on top of it. I can connect it to different platforms that I want to execute that uh, actions with. And it's hard to find all that with like any other platform. And that, that, that's the availability and functionality that Palantir provides, which is extremely nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think having all that located inside of 
kind of one core offering also from a business perspective makes it like attractive. Exactly. Um, obviously, it's also very big clients because they can have thousands of people using it and, and engaging with it. Okay, so let's talk about the O word that uh, everyone loves, the ontology. Mm -hmm. What is so special from your perspective in Palantir's ontology within Foundry? Right, right. So um, I see a lot of people, it's defined as the digital twin uh, everywhere. But in my perspective, the way I see it as is it's, it's a way for you to sort of um, connect with different objects around uh, the platform. And that and what I see it as like, if I'm building something, I want an output for that. Let's just say I'm building something for a data set that uh, of, of chairs or something, right? I have a data set of chairs. I want to be able to connect that data set of chairs as an object to other objects in different places, right? I might not like data set of tables. So it completely depends. And being able to create those correlations between objects and being able to map it, up, map it out to different actions as well in different places, for example, uh, OSDK, uh, figuring out how you can connect it to that and um, building a model on it with AIP, feeding in an object as a data set. It's completely free and um, free as in like, it, it gives you a lot of freedom to do whatever you want. And I feel that's really nice with what Palantir offers in terms of being able to create that sort of um, ontology or sort of like a structure that you can imagine and build on top of. And is that hard to do in other BI platforms? Um, yeah, I've worked with Power BI, but it's it's not in my in my perspective, it's not the best to sort of build on top of. For example, if I'm trying to build a platform to analyze my sales data, like Power BI can max probably give me like some sort of graph to understand. Right. And um, it, it, in just the way that I've sort of understood, you sort of want to end to end functionality for what you're doing. If you're specifically a sales customer or sorry, a sales um, company, or you're just looking to build anything and analyze your data, I think you want a sort of end to end way to take that in and I'll put it in a way that you're going to use it in the future. And um, another thing too is uh, I see a lot of uh, people like my age, they're like, what is Palantir? Like, what is a founder? Like, what does it do? And um, they think of it as like a data platform. Like, yeah, there's a lot of data platforms here and there, but like, um, what exactly differentiates Palantir? And I think it's this topic of ontology. Your ability to build an end-to-end -end platform, you can build on this platform as well. You can build platforms on this platform. And that's a really cool thing. Right. And usually um, that's not possible with anywhere else. So I feel like that's what differentiates Foundry. And looking to the future too, growth-wise, like that's how everything is heading towards. People need data. Data is like, what? Like everyone needs data. Data is the biggest thing. So well, well, why, why is the future heading towards building platforms on top of platforms. Right, right, yeah. I mean, the thing is, as companies grow, you end up getting more data. You uh, end up needing different actions, different actionable items to take. Uh, you also have a lot of um, different uh, functionalities on your own end that you want to be able to incorporate with your own platforms as well, right? And the thing with um, Foundry and uh, whatever Palantir is working on is you're able to incorporate all these features into your own operating system. And therefore, I guess Palantir calls it the OSDK, their own platform on the platform, right? And that's how I see it as you want to be able to incorporate your data into a way that you're able to understand. And I don't see any, any other platform being able to replicate in the similar functionality. Have you had experience with the Databricks and Snowflakes of the world? Um, I've never built on them, but I've I've been familiar with them. Yeah. OK. And, and, and from your kind of perspective, do you see them as platforms to build on necessarily or not as much as something with an ontology like Palantir? Right, right. Uh, I feel like the functionality and the use of Palantir is much easier. I haven't really built with Databricks, so I don't know. But uh, the learning curve was a bit high, as I mentioned. But once you get past that initial learning curve, learning afterwards is so much easier because then you like understand how everything actually works in terms of the objects, the ontology and everything. So you're able to actually like put full effort into developing what you need. So, right. Yeah. And in terms of like, like, Fortune 500 companies and, you know, multi-trillion dollar companies that need something like an operating system. When you think of why they value the ontology, you already kind of said philosophically why they care about it. Mm -hmm. Do you actually think these guys are comfortable trusting one platform to manage everything? Or do they like having segmented platforms inside of the, the tech stack? I mean, the way I see is the biggest thing with Palantir is security, right? You want security in everything you do. And I think that's the biggest thing that Palantir has to offer. Palantir is working with the government. Like, you can't be more secure than that, right? So I guess in, in that sense, um, you you would rely on one platform to do it. The thing I see with multiple different steps along the way is you'll have data leaks here and there. 
And to prevent that kind of stuff, you don't really want to go from platform A to platform B and like right. you might some data in the middle. So that's the problem with that. Right. Um, AIP, any mm -hmm. perspective and thoughts on what that means on top of Foundry? I'm big on machine learning. I'm big on AI and um, I love doing analysis with data. So uh, the way I was able to work with AIP was um, the first time I directly used the built-in AIP models to do sentiment analysis. And the cool thing is um, uh, Foundry actually provides you with four or five um, already built models that you can uh, use. And I think that's really cool because as a, as a newcomer to uh, the Foundry, I'm not sure how I can link my own models that I build on my end to this platform, right? As, as a first timer. So being able to see this uh, sentiment analysis model that I could use and implement in my uh, project, I thought it was really cool because you can't really find that anywhere else. Okay, and uh, what is your perspective on AI being the future as a software? Are you guys all in Berkeley just talking about AI, AI, AI? I think that's everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, I think I think everything's heading towards AI, and I think the way that Palantir is capitalizing on this is really nice. Um, you see these GPT models, these Claude models everywhere. So being able to use those in, in the models that you build on Palantir, being able to analyze data with that, uh, so just seeing everything head towards AI is pretty nice. And I, I think I really like how Palantir is capitalizing on that very well. Yeah. It's, and, you know, as an investor, I see AI being talked about a lot. I do think a lot of startups are going after the opportunity. And a lot of times um, when I see a startup build a new AI product, mm -hmm. and one of the VCs at General Catalyst was talking about this yesterday on CNBC, uh, the biggest value of AI is, in his opinion, workplace transformation. So unlocking right. enterprise value. The other two biggest areas, I believe, are obviously something like self-driving and then something like humanoid robotics. So if you got workplace transformation as that third biggest layer, and a lot of these startups are trying to create uh, niches in which they can be the finance AI, the legal AI. And then I think of Palantir, which just has all the security to do all of that in a more meaningful way, then yep. it kind of feels like when Carp says, hey, we can take the market. If the market really is that big, maybe Palantir actually can take the market. I was actually at an 8VC event with uh, Jack. And Jack was talking about how a lot of the startups nowadays are incorporating the Foundry into their platform to analyze their data and provide them efficient outputs on what they're looking for. And um, there's actually a few startups that demoed what they were uh, doing with Foundry. And I thought it was pretty cool to see how it's not just these Fortune 500 companies, but also startups. Like you have like from the early stage all the way to um, Fortune 500, everyone in between can access this platform and use it. And there's functionality for everyone to which I see is really nice. And actually adding on to your point about um, AI, I think a lot of the lower end, um, lower level um, jobs will end up being replaced. But in terms of what people actually need, I think Palantir accommodates for that because you need higher end thinking, you need higher end uh, complexity and being able to understand the way, to being able to understand how all this works is I think that is I think the way that AI will trend, so. Right, and it's not easy. And I, I, I think like when a company tries to go through digital transformation, uh, mm -hmm. especially if they're a legacy company or startup tries to like innovate against it, you need some type of unifying platform. And if Palantir could actually yeah. hold your hand through that process, and this is why Carp calls their uh, clients partners versus customers, mm -hmm. it just seems like there's a special relationship, you know, that they could have with a lot of these customers or in the exactly. words of Carp clients. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So last question for you. Uh, developer evangelism is very important for Palantir. They have this new DevCon thing. They're trying to really get developers to care about the about the platform and eventually show off their use cases of it because we know there's so many use cases and that could hopefully create a snowball effect on other developers getting in how do you feel about the broader spread of the platform via developers and what do you think is it going to take for developers to be using it like they're using aws right yeah for sure um i'm actually a really big palantir head i'm also an investor um i've submitted to the devcon i go to a lot of events watch the aip conferences so i'm extremely big on palantir but in terms of how I think that um, we can get developers to use this more is the right now, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but a lot of people are seeing Palantir as just a data platform. And that's not really what it is. I was talking to Chad about this and seeing Palantir as a data platform doesn't really provide the functionality that it wants, right? We right. want people to see Palantir as a way to uh, build their end-to-end -end solution on. And um, usually now, for example, I just build with React and Python. You can do that on Palantir. You can do that with OSDK. Why use, why use separate functionalities when you can just do it on the platform itself, right? It's secure, it's easy. It might be a little bit hard to understand at the beginning, but if you can accomplish all of that 
within one, then why would you need something else? You know, like that's, that's the way I think about it. And in, in, in terms of getting other people to use it, I've actually had a lot of friends approach me. Um, Twitter's a really big place for this. Uh, when, when you publish um, what you're working on, your project that you've worked on with Foundry, a lot of people within the Palantir community repost it. I think that's really big because getting this uh, acknowledgement, getting this um, knowledge outside of the community itself is really big in terms of having other people work on uh, the Foundry, having other people like recognize it, possibly tell other people too. I think the greatest thing here is word of mouth, right? If we can get the the Foundry um, uh, thing by word of mouth, it'd be really big. And I think recently too, they started the the free tier for yeah. the, the yeah. Foundry, which is really, really big, I think, because... Otherwise, I would have hopped, I would have not hopped on. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it seems like they're really taking steps towards it. And I agree. It, it's almost like with an investor thinking Pounder was a black box a couple of years ago. Now, if you think they're mm -hmm. a black box and you just haven't done a lot of research, same thing here. If you think they're a data platform, it's about Pounder educating a lot of people to realize it's not just a data platform. And hopefully that creates more adoption as well. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's a, a way for both uh, developers and companies. I think it's anyone can use it. And it's just, a really nice way to incorporate whatever you're doing in terms of whether you're building, whether you're analyzing and anything in that uh, sort of way. All right. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Juffin, a sophomore at Berkeley, getting a head start with Palantir Foundry. I'll put his Twitter in the description so you guys can check him out. Juffin, thank you for being here and I'll talk to you thank later. Thank you very much, Amit. I'll catch you guys later. See ya.